Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, alternative casting methods using carbon foam foundries. Those in the know will recognize this as simple carburized bread. That's right, this carbon foam was at one time a lovely loaf of sourdough bread. It uh, got wrapped in tin foil and then put in the barbecue for a couple hours. The reason this doesn't burn, of course, is because we seal it up properly and then oxygen doesn't get in to actually burn it. Instead, it carburizes it. It, it drives off, it cooks off all the volatile compounds and leaves behind this beautiful, yeah, arguably beautiful carbon foam structure. This is no longer bread. It's carbon foam. As such, it makes an incredible insulator. We'll use a small tuna can as our crucible. This, of course, will be our refractory. And this will be our... We might as well make something useful. I want a knob. Reasons. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to do this with the lost foam method. Essentially, what happens is you put this in sand. Very simple method. You put this in sand, you pour in the molten aluminum, and it burns out the form. And what you're left with is a solidified aluminum slab in the shape of the former styrofoam. Most dangerous tool in the shop here. And I'm not talking about me. Dick, check. Vice, check. Mother on speed dial, check. Pretty smoky. Better open a window. Oh, it's melting. Let's put some more in there. The more, more better. I have a quick blue with that. See how we do. Ooh. Flames is hot. Pretty molten. Could use a little more heat though, I think. Lots of dross on there as well. That's to be expected. Let me just get rid of that. No big deal. Dross is foamy aluminum oxide. It's not good for the casting. And here we go. Probably not good for my self-healing cutting mat, I'm guessing. Hmm. Eh, yeah. what do you do about this? Nobody panic. It'll take care of itself in a few minutes. <laughs> what you do not want to do is put water on that. Now you can see here, as it solidifies, as it crystallizes, it kind of goes crumbly. It's really interesting until it solidifies. Of course, the grain structure, the, the tighter grain structure is due to having silicon in there. It nucleates faster than if you just have a, a certain grade that, that is an extrusion. It's a lot better to take cast aluminum, break it up and use that rather than fresh aluminum. 
the smallest crucible and biggest the scabbiest pour. If you don't have time or you don't have the wherewithal, you don't have the money to make a proper kiln crucible furnace, this is an option for you. As silly as it sounds, you know. Small children and fools. We got super lucky on that. I hollowed out the inside and it actually collapsed, but not before we were able to fill the actual mold cavity. I probably shouldn't be, but I'm pretty pleased with that part considering it came out of a loaf of bread. Now we can see the surface finish here. Looks like the surface of the moon, but if we turn it over, no porosity whatsoever. What's going on? So that's great. That is actually great. It's because we're using beach sand. Just this is the scabbiest, cheapest setup I could like minimum viable. Absolutely minimum. You take a loaf of bread, you turn it into a forge. I think that's pretty damn cool. The results, eh, you know what? We can do a lot better with that, but we have to increase the chooch factor on our gear. Minimum viable, no porosity at all on that. I'm, I'm quite surprised, actually. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice.